<laughs> Whoa, that is cool. That's the 2021 Mustang Mach-E, and someone is clearly having way too much fun with it. Ford revealed the Mach-E last fall, and it was the new hotness. Everyone was talking about it. That is, until Ford went full-on nuclear when it revealed the all-new Bronco. Since then, I guess you could say the Mustang Mach-E has taken a back seat to the Bronco. Get it? Back seat? That's a really bad car joke. I apologize for that one. A few quick housekeeping notes before we get into the details of the Mach-E. I loved the response to my last Ford Bronco video, and thank you to everyone who subscribed. We had a lot of good comments and feedback, and I'm gonna try to address some of the issues that viewers pointed out. Going forward, I'm going to speak a little faster, blink a little more, and try to have a less punchable face. No promises on that last one. Seriously, I had no idea I had such a punchable face until this guy pointed it out. I'm sorry, I apologize for my face. Okay, let's get into it. The Mach-E is a new five-door electric crossover from Ford. And even though its name is inspired by the Mustang Mach-1, it's a Mustang in kind of the same way that the Mustang 2 was a Mustang. Clearly Ford is trying to spin off the established Mustang name as its own brand, similar to what they appear to be planning with the Bronco nameplate, and similar to what Dodge did with Ram trucks. This isn't Ford's first foray into the EV world, but it does appear to be their best hope yet of putting a dent in Tesla's market share. Let's take a look at this thing and see what it's all about. Let's start with the exterior. Okay, so first things first. It's, it's not a bad looking vehicle for a crossover, Kind of looks like a Mustang had a baby with a slightly uglier Mustang. You can definitely see the Mustang inspiration on the front end, as well as the rear taillights. Notice that it doesn't have any conventional door handles, but instead features pop-out doors. Owners can use their smartphone or the keypad on the B-pillar to open them. There's also an available panoramic fixed glass roof, which should give the cabin an open, airy feel. For reals though, I kind of like the looks. For a crossover. It's not exactly a segment with a lot of good looking cars, I guess. I think it looks better than the Tesla Model Y, for instance. What do you think? If you think it looks better than the Model Y, click the thumbs up button below. Whatever you do, just don't click the thumbs down button. I had a commenter on my last video who was very concerned that I was telling people to thumbs down my video. I don't really care though. Click either one, thumbs up or thumbs down. I actually think it's kind of funny, but I digress. Surprisingly, the Mach-E is actually about two and a half inches shorter in length than the Mustang, but 8.7 inches taller. The rear hatch has 29 cubic feet of storage, and underneath the hood where you would normally find a gas engine, you will instead find a frunk. Yes, I said frunk. Now I want you to say frunk and try not to laugh. It's just a funny word. I don't know what it is, it makes me laugh. Anyway, the frunk has about 4.8 cubic feet of storage. Moving to the interior, it appears very similar to a lot of the new EVs that we've looked at. Ford has kept the finishings very minimalistic, yet modern. There's a vertically mounted 15 and a half inch touchscreen infotainment system, which controls most of the car's systems and uses Ford's Sync 4A operating system. I don't know how Sync 4A differs from Sync 4, but I hope the A doesn't stand for alpha release. How about you test this yourself before offering it to us, Ford? The driver's cluster uses a 10.2 inch digital display, and the steering wheel also has a number of physical buttons. The Mach-E does have a ton of technology, not the least of which is Ford Copilot 360. The various features of this system range from a nanny suite that includes collision avoidance, lane keep assist, and automatic emergency braking, to things like adaptive cruise control and evasive steering assistance. There's also an additional package available that adds park assist and active drive assist functionality, which is slated to be rolling out in the third quarter of 2021. I mentioned earlier that the doors can be popped open using your phone. This is all done via a smartphone app called Ford Pass that is connected to your car. Alternatively, the Mach-E will automatically recognize your phone as you approach the car and light up a button for you to push. As soon as you press that little button, the door magically opens. Pretty cool, right? 
You can also use the Ford Pass app to roll the windows up and down, activate the panic alarm, open the rear lift gate, and engage the remote start. The app can also automatically adjust the seating position, mirrors, radio, and other goodies so that each driver can customize things just how they like it without the need to readjust everything whenever they switch drivers. I feel like Ford missed a golden opportunity to name that the Goldilocks feature. So that's a lot of tech. Now let's do the spec. Ford is offering the Mach-E in a number of trim levels and configurations. Honestly, it hurt my tiny brain a bit trying to make sense of all this, so I'm gonna do my best here. Call me out in the comments below if I get something wrong here. We are all in this together. There are two battery pack sizes and three power outputs. First, there's a single motor rear wheel drive version that produces 266 horsepower with the 68 kilowatt hour battery or 290 horsepower with the 88 kilowatt hour battery. Both battery packs should propel this thing to Mach E speed, otherwise known as 60 miles an hour in under seven seconds and provide a range of either 210 or 300 miles depending on the battery option that you choose. There's also a dual motor all wheel drive version that offers 266 horsepower with the 68 kilowatt hour battery or 346 horsepower with the 88 kilowatt hour battery pack. The claimed zero to 60 times of these configurations are both under six seconds and provide either 210 or 270 miles of range based on the battery option. Additionally, there's also a GT trim with the 88 kilowatt hour battery, which produces 459 horsepower and will get you from zero to 60 in the mid three second range, all while providing a 250 mile range. Charging is available via an AC home charger or DC fast charger at up to 150 kilowatts. Pricing you ask? As if any of you car fanatics would let pricing stand in the way of your automotive purchases. But in case you care, pricing starts at just under $44,000, not including the federal EV tax credit, and ranges clear up to a starting price of just over $60,000 for the highest end GT trim. So I'd say that's fairly competitive with its chief competition of the Tesla Model Y and the recently announced Fisker Ocean, which coincidentally I have another video for and will link on the card at the end. So I have a lot of questions for you. First, what do you think about using the Mustang design language and nameplate for this EV? It's definitely Mustang inspired, but does it deserve the Mustang badge? Second question, would you mind hitting the thumbs up button below and possibly the subscribe button while you're down there? If you're still not sure, check out some of my other videos and then decide. No pressure, but it makes me feel accomplished when people like my videos. Okay, last question, the Mustang Mach-E the Tesla Model Y or the Fisker Ocean? If you had to choose one, which would it be? Or is there another EV that you prefer instead? Let me know in the comment section below. I've had a lot of fun making these videos and I love chatting with everyone in the comments. And yes, I know I have a punchable face, but since this is all digital, I would just encourage you to punch the subscribe button instead. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You are all awesome and I hope you have a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time.